Hello everyone and welcome back to English Tips for Speakers of Chinese Languages. Usually every week I present to you one common English mistake made by Chinese speakers, but this week I'm going to do things a little bit differently. This week I'm going to present to you 10 common preposition mistakes that Chinese speakers make. Prepositions are difficult. They're difficult for everybody in the world. It's probably, probably the hardest thing in the English language, arguably. So one thing I always say about prepositions is that even though they're hard and people get them wrong, they're usually very, very small mistakes and it doesn't change the meaning so much and they're not funny or anything. So it shouldn't stop you from being brave and from working hard and from studying. And they are learnable. You just have to put a lot of time into it. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to show you a slide with 10 sentences and you should guess what the correct preposition is. And I will talk about each sentence in the slides that follow this slide here. Okay, so as you'll notice, each sentence has a choice, so you have to choose one of the two prepositions. And sometimes no preposition is needed, and this is a situation where Chinese speakers usually put a preposition where none is needed. Sentence number one, Tom is playing basketball in the evening. We use the preposition in with parts of the day. It's that simple. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. And there are exceptions to this, but they're so rare that you shouldn't even worry about them. So the rule of thumb is, say, in the evening, in the afternoon, in the morning. Sentence number two. We got together to discuss our summer plans. So no preposition is needed after the verb to discuss. Let's discuss this. I want to discuss something with you. You can, however, say, we had a discussion about our summer plans. So when discussion is used as the noun, then you could say about. Sentence number three, he goes to school by bus. The rule of thumb here is, unlike in Chinese, we use the preposition to after go when you are talking about arriving at a place. I want to go to a movie. Let's go to the store. There are some exceptions to this. And some words don't take a preposition after go because they are adverbs of place. For example, go home, go abroad, go there, go anywhere, go out. There's a list of these, so it's good to know them. Sentence number four. We need to emphasize the effect that carbon dioxide has on our planet. Some verbs always take certain prepositions. Some verbs don't take any. And Chinese speakers often make the mistake of putting a preposition after a verb that shouldn't take any. Emphasize alone doesn't take any. However, you can say to put an emphasis on something. Sentence number five, I can't sleep well on an airplane. There's a great rule of thumb for this. And the rule of thumb is, if you can stand up in it, for example, a bus, a train, a plane, then you use on. I was on the bus. I was on the train. I was on the plane. If you cannot stand up in it, for example, a car or a truck, then you use in, in a car, in a truck. And the one exception to this is submarine. And as you know from the Beatles song, we all live in a yellow submarine. Sentence number six, they lack the skills to get the job done. This is another example where Chinese speakers put a preposition where no preposition is needed. I lack the time to get this done. You can, however, use of with lack if lack is not the verb, a lack of. I couldn't get it done due to a lack of time. Sentence number seven, Lynn lives on the fifth floor of that building. And the rule here is we always use on for stories or floors. And I guess the logic is that you are on a surface when you are on the fifth floor. So don't say in the fifth floor, it's on the fifth floor. Sentence number eight, I work at the People's Bank of China or I work for the People's Bank of China. So the rule here is we use at when talking about a company, I work at the People's Bank of China or a place, I work at a bank. You can, however, use for with a company, I work for the People's Bank of China, or a person, I work for John. So you would never say I work at John, it's always I work for John. And you use in with a field or industry, so I work in banking or I work in finance, but you would never say I work in the People's Bank of China, so you work in a sector. 
Sentence number nine, she married her high school sweetheart, and yet another case where no preposition is needed. When you use the verb to marry in the active sense, as in this sentence, you don't use a preposition. However, when you use the verb to marry in the passive, you use the preposition to. So she is married to a rich guy, or she is married to her high school sweetheart. Sentence number 10. She divorced her high school sweetheart last year. So this mistake is similar to the last preposition mistake we covered. So you don't use a preposition after divorce when divorce stands alone as the verb. I divorced her last year. You can, however, say, I got divorced from her last year. Okay, I hope you found that useful and that you're more confident in using prepositions now. So just a few quick things. I hope you'll click on the thumbs up below if you liked the video. I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel as these videos come out every week like clockwork. And I have a course, an online course called 50 Common English Mistakes. And if you follow the link in the description box below, you'll get there and you'll get half off the course. And I have a website that's called English Tips for Chinese Speakers. And I have a Twitter feed. So please, follow, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And that's it. So hopefully I will see you next week.